Hey guys, welcome to this uh, tutorial on how to do uh, mud for scale armor or model armor. Um, so we're going to be doing a rather thick muck effect or mud effect on this Ming uh, Le Power 2A4. So it's meant to be on a kind of like a, a winter exercise, so it's going to be quite muddy. And we're going to be using a relatively simple method that gives a very good result and can be quite universal and flexible. So we're going to be using um, these products from AK, which is their Fresh Mud, Damp Earth, Kursk Earth. You can also use um, anything like their Earth Effects or anything like that. These are more just tinted um, enamels. We're also going to be using um, a rather big tub of plaster, which we're going to mix our enamels into. You're also going to need some old brushes and either an airbrush or an old brush to flick your kind of slurry or mud mixture onto the fagel. We're also going to be applying a fire brush to build it up in certain areas. Also, if you have some static um, grass, a bit of flock, um, maybe keep that handy too and we can mix that into our mixture to add a bit of grass fiber. It's quite an interesting effect. And then we're also going to be using um, a tan colored paint, in this case Vallejo Sand Yellow, and that's going to be our dust layer. I always like to build up a dust layer before I do anything, because in real life that's where the first layer of weathering is going to come from. So before we start doing anything with our enamels, we're going to lay our dust coat, and this is going to be with Vallejo Model Air Sand Yellow. I'm going to apply this with an airbrush, I'm going to somewhat tim my paint and apply it at about 12 psi. Our, our simple dust coat, this time apply with an airbrush to dry. It is important that we allow any oils or acrylic or whatever type of paint you put down to fully dry before we start applying our enamel uh, plaster mixture. And also you might notice I have covered the um, sprockets for each wheel um, with a small piece of uh, tape just to keep the mixture off them, uh, otherwise it will make life getting the wheels on quite difficult. So, on to the actual mud. Now, as I mentioned, I'll be using um, AK products, so I'm going to be using Kursk Earth. However, any type of mud or earth tones you have is okay, as long as you have several tones of intensity. So, I have Kursk Earth, which is kind of like a normal kind of earth, dirt kind of um, tone. I have damp mud, which has a glossy satin quality to it, and fresh mud, which is a furry dark colour, and once again it's a bit of a, a glossy element to it. So I have a big tub here of plaster of Paris, um, you will need some mixing apparatus, I just have a few uh, bottle caps, they work very fine for this job. You will also need a pipette, some old brushes and your mixture. So I tend to um, just take an ad as I wish. In that case, you don't have to get too concerned or insane about mixtures. Scoop about that much uh, plaster in, because remember we are going to be covering quite a bit of the model. And just like I said, actually it might be a little bit too much. So like maybe a quarter of a, uh, a, quarter of a tablespoon should be enough. So I'm going to take my, um, my Kerr skirt, which is going to be the first shade I put down because that's the lightest and that's going to be the earth that's been there the longest. I am just merely going to take my pipette. I'm going to use the same pipette for all three colours. I don't mind if they mix. I'm going to apply each colour individually using the exact same method, um, but I won't pour them all at the same time because I don't want them to start drying in the cups while I'm still working on one colour. Best not to rush this. So there we go, so that's, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take our Kursk Earth mixture, and I'm going to take an old brush, and I'm just going to apply a little bit to the bristles. I've just packed the kind of the top bristles of this old brush, and note how it's all flared out and haggard. This is good because it'll give it a nice splatter effect. 
I'm going to take my airbrush. Alternatively, if you don't have an airbrush, if you get a pair of gloves and just flick the brush with your, your finger, you'll get the same effect. And just quick little blast by positioning the brush. So you know where we're at. Yeah, so we'll focus in around here where the sprocket, dry sprocket is. And as you can kind of see, we start getting a little bit of mud build up. It is very, very slight, but it's there. And we just begin to build up each layer. Again, holding our our brush about maybe two inches to um, about two to three inches above the model, and keeping the nozzle of the air perpendicular to the um, to the brush, and it's a quick blast of air. We can also by changing the position and the distance between the brush and the airbrush blast, we can change just how much splatter we get. Again, don't be scared um, to try out this. Again, you can always just paint the bottom of your tank first and give it a go on that. So I'm gonna keep going with this and see what we end up with. have our first pass. The camera's having a bit of a hard time picking it up, but you can't see, there we go. So you can kind of see how we've gotten accumulation of splatters of different intensities um, on the hull. And this is how re it behaves in real life. And to get the different intensities and textures by simply just holding the brush at different lengths away from the model, the farther away from the model, the finer the spray. Again, the short, maybe one second, two second burst of air. Um, or quick flicks off the brush will do the desired effect. So we're back with um, our damp earth, which is the second darkest color in the um, trifecta, if you will. And I've made this a slightly thicker consistency, so basically not as much enamel wash to a higher degree of uh, plaster. And you can kind of see that this is a far more gloopier consistency. Now I'm going to be more disciplined with this, so I'm going to be a little bit more disciplined to where I apply this. So I'm going to be kind of focusing further and further down towards the actual idler wheels or the torsion bars themselves. part is going to be applying um, the darkest color to the mixture which is fresh mud and like this is a very um, almost like a, um, a black brown color and we're going to be really careful and disciplined where we apply that and we're really going to be focusing really to the the most lowest elements of the swing arms and suspension so you can see the consistency I went for very thick quite a bit more um, plaster to enamel wash ratio. And then this is up to you. You can, you can experiment with the ratio to get a consistency you like. As this is fresh, I want this to be quite thick and gloopy and nasty looking. So that's why I went for a somewhat thicker mix. Again, I'm using the same brush. I don't really mind if there's remnants of the color that was on before it. That's 
it doesn't really matter. If anything, it just helps to transition ever so slightly. So um, I'm gonna be somewhat more disciplined. So you can see how the darker the color, which for some reason it, it all kind of looks the same on camera. So it's lighter up here. And again, you can kind of see the dust coat that we put on with the airbrush first. Then we have the lighter dirt. And as we get down lower, it's getting darker to simulate fresher and um, more recent applications of dirt and mud. I'm gonna focus around here first. And I'm literally going to just kind of keep it down, keep it down low. Now, if it splashes up, that's fine. Um, I don't mind that. But I'm just kind of keeping only the tip of the brush, just the tip. <laughs> Any Archer fans will get that. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, so I'm just keeping just at the top of the bristles loaded with a uh, mixture, nothing more. So I don't want this being as unruly. And I'm just literally going to keep aiming towards the base of the suspension. some big blobs like I have here and they look a little bit more like you um, they don't really look uh, to scale just give a quick blast of air and I'll kind of sit them down and uh, make it look a little bit more realistic I'm going to come in really heavy and just boom and give a big blast of it and other places I'm going to be kind of timid with it. Again, it's up to yourself how you want to do it. I just like to do it that way. You can see the effect it gives us. Very realistic and um, not too um, aggressive either, which is very good. We don't want it to be too overpowering. So to add the last very thick buildups of fresh mud to some of the more recessed areas, I'm gonna take what's left of our mixture, which isn't a lot, and I'm gonna just take a pinch of static grass and just fire in a, a little bit of the fibers like that. Mix it in. And there we have fresh mud. And again, I'm gonna to try to pick up parts that actually have some of the fibers, and I'm just going to work them in into some of the more recessed areas. Again, might need a few more grass fibers. So again, mix it all up again. I'm just picking out a few areas where I think it would accumulate. I just want to work that in. So again, look, look at the brush, it's quite nasty looking. And I'm just going to work it into areas like this and just, kind of just throw it in and build it up. And that's all we kind of want to break it up even more. But in a, in a means that we can control. You can go as mad with this as you want, but I always think um, less is more when it comes to this type of uh, heavy weathering. So just kind of focus down here and take what's left of the mixture because I don't want it all just to be. Um, static grass, if there's no plaster left, it won't build that here. I'm definitely gonna work in here. Like so. So, if I zoom us out, we should have an effect like this. 
as you can see, kind of the damp is at the base of the machine. There we have it. And you can also see the glossy quality to the fresh mud, and that's exactly what we want. So, there we have a relatively simple, if not um, a little bit of an involved method of creating realistic mud effects using AK enamel filters with plaster. So I hope you guys found this useful. Um, do um, stay tuned for more tutorials and how-tos coming up in the near future. Thanks for watching as always guys. Stay safe, happy modeling, and watch out for those buses. Bye bye.